Hello and welcome to the weekly review, a program of Sawa Sawa Network. My name is Roger Alfred Yoron Modi, I'm the producer and the host. Today we shall be discussing the South Sudan permanent constitution making, making process, uh, which is enshrined in the revitalized peace agreement. And more specifically, we shall be looking into this week's workshop on the permanent constitution making process that brought together officials from the revitalized transitional government of national unity, the parties to the revitalized peace agreement, and others. Our guest is joining us via Zoom from Juba. She is Lorna Merekaje, uh, the Secretary General of uh, Democratic Engagement Monitoring and Observation uh, Program, SUDEMOP. Uh, and uh, she uh, has been the lead uh, facilitator of the workshop on the permanent constitution making process. Welcome to the weekly review, uh, Lorna Merekaje. Thank you very much for having me, Roger. Well, for the benefit of our ed audience, um, well, uh, the permanent constitution here uh, means, uh, of course, uh, that uh, South Sudan has been going through uh, transitional constitutions since independence, and um, people have not been able to come together to make uh, a constitution that uh, uh, have been all inclusive and. Uh, 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 um, that is why the revitalized peace agreement, uh, and I should make this clear to our audience, uh, mandates, mandates uh, the transitional government of national unity, uh, and that is uh, in Article 1.2, to oversee and ensure that the permanent constitution making process is successfully carried out and completed before the end of the transitional period. So uh, there are several provisions uh, there uh, on, on that uh, uh, permanent constitution making process, but uh, for our for the benefit of our audience, uh, Lorna Merikaje, uh, what we would like to know from you is um, first a brief summary of uh, the workshop on the permanent constitution making process. What, what, what is it? Thank you very much, Roger. In, in a nutshell, the conversations or the series of workshops that we've been having since September until today is an initial conversation around the constitution making process in South Sudan. You realize that the revitalized agreement or resolution of conflict in the Republic of South Sudan dedicated a chapter that focuses on constitu constitution making and that is chapter six of the agreement. So the chapter six of the agreement envisage and envisions the constitution making process to start with a workshop that is to be organized by the Revitalized Joint Monitoring and Evaluation Commission, RGMEC. However, after consultation with different groups, that is women, youth, civil society, and political leaders, it, it came out clear that they need to have the conversations even before the JEMEC conversation. And this consultation, this, this series of conversations are being sponsored or facilitated by UNMIS, UNDP, UN Women, and International Ideas. So the, the conversations are intended to prepare the people of South Sudan, to prepare the stakeholders. You, you might be wondering, when I say to prepare the stakeholders, then are the stakeholders only in Juba? No. What we are doing is we are having conversation with leaders from different groups so that within their constituencies, they are able to start the constitution, the, the conversation around constitution making process. So that is the workshop. And the workshop is intended to one, solicit views of the stakeholders on designing an inclusive constitution making process. Number two is that through these conversations or workshops, we expect to identify capacity needs and capacity gaps so that partners clearly know what kind of help is needed by people of South Sudan. But also one important thing, which is my task at the end of this series of workshops, I will be using the views that we are collecting from the workshops to design a roadmap for the constitution making process in South Sudan and also de design a guidance note that will clearly outline some of the key things that need to be included in order to have an inclusive process. So, what, yes, what, what, yes, in what, a nutshell, mm -hmm. that is it. What, what, 
were the discussions about over the past few days and uh, who were involved uh, our audience would really like to know that in the last few days we had conversation with political leaders in this country we had representatives from different political parties we had you you know that the political landscape in south sudan according to the agreement we have about four categories of pol political groups we have splm that was incumbent by then but i mean the splm that was in government when the agreement was being negotiated we have splm io which is splm in opposition and then we have the former detainees and we have the other political parties so in in the workshops that in the workshop that we concluded yesterday which was a two day workshop started on wednesday and then thursday we had representatives from all those groups and we also had national ministers joining the conversation to represent their parties not their institutions as as ministries so yes that's that's the kind of selection for for the conversation that ended yesterday and today's conversation we have we've started another conversation which has similar contents but now it's focusing on youth leaders so we have youth leaders from political parties but also youth from other youth groups such as the youth union or even youth from civil society organizations in the conversation yes uh, as we uh move on uh i think uh some of the parties that made up the incumbent uh transitional government national unity at the time of the signing of the agreement uh may not be happy that you said they are splm all because that, that incumbent was comprising of other parties also like the io led by tabandenga and, and and others uh that's just for the benefit of our of our audience and uh, right now uh let's Let's hear from you. What were they saying? What were the discussions? Because the, the, you mentioned the parties, but what were the views in summary, just brief, in the, in the workshop? Well, perhaps I should start from where, what were the discussions focusing on? One, the discussions are focusing on the, the process as outlined in the agreement, that is chapter six, but also the, the discussions are flagging out specific issues because we know that apart from focusing on the process and preparing or engaging in conversations that will eventually feed into the workshop that joint monitoring and evaluation commission will organize as provided for in article 6.7 of the agreement there are going to be substantive issues that need to be discussed during the constitution making process so we are also flagging those substantive issues and one of some of the substantive issues that we have picked to 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 inform or to engage the leaders on and to raise awareness and draw their attention to is one the question of governance system you realize that the agreement has clearly spoken about a federal system but then what kind of a federal system are we talking about so the question of federalism as the type of governance for south sudan has to be discussed and that is a substantive issue we know that this cannot be discussed in a session alone but we are just telling the participants that these are some of the issues that require attention. The other issue is the question of boundaries. You realize that both our internal and our external boundaries are still having issues. So definitely when we are working on a constitution, we, we need to pay attention to issues of boundaries. And the issue of nationality, when we talk about being a South Sudanese, what does that mean? And who is a South Sudanese? So those, those are just three out of many other issues that might come up, Roger. And we know that land is also an emotive issue in South Sudan. So that the issue of the question of boundary can also be connected to land and then resources. So there are so many things. What we're doing is we're just bringing to the attention of the leaders that a constitution making process will definitely require attention on substantive issues. Well, uh, since uh, the workshop uh, is still also going on up to tomorrow, I believe, uh, what we, we cannot ask you of the outcomes entirely, but uh, 
maybe so far are there resolutions or, or something that you can tell our audience that is an outcome or something that came up in in the past uh, few days uh, discussions yes one of the one of the things that has come out clearly from the three workshops that we've had so far that is with civil society leaders women leaders and the political leaders which we concluded yesterday is the need for partners to engage and support this process and that support is not only financial support but the people of south sudan would want technical support as well and the technical support it's not because we don't have south sudanese who have the required technical expertise but we are looking at comparative experience what was the case like in other countries kenya went through constitution making process uganda went through that and even beyond the region so one of the things that has come out clear is that the the participants or the leaders that involved that got involved in this process are in agreement and actually make a continuous appeal to the partners to walk the journey with the people of south sudan number two is that we've also come to realization that in a, a constitution making process like this must have specific principles that we adhere to. So we're looking at the principles outlined in chapter six. How then do we contextualize it? Like, for example, if we talk about a people driven process, a process that reflects the views and aspirations of the people, how do we get that in the current environment that we have? Is the environment conducive enough for us to be able to get views of everybody? And if we say that we want an inclusive process, are we saying that the over 12 million South Sudanese must say a thing about it or how are we going about it? So one of the things that has come out clear is the question of consensus. There has to be consensus in the process and it has to be inclusive. And uh, what is going to happen next after the workshop as far as uh, permanent constitution making process is concerned? Okay, after the workshops, and as it has been presented by GEMEC representative, the official process is soon going to kickstart, which is to start by a workshop which is to be organized by GEMEC. And as I mentioned, the workshop provided for in Article 6.7 of the agreement. That the planning process for that workshop, according to the information we got from Joint Monitoring and Evaluation Commission, is that they have done the plans and they expect to have that workshop, to, to conduct that workshop in December or early January. However, from the workshops that we have been conducting, our ultimate objective is to design a document that will inform the constitution making process, which I am calling the roadmap. And that is directly my mandate as the lead facilitator in this process. I'll be working with other national consultants for us to analyze the views and design a roadmap that reflects the views and the aspirations of the leaders to shape the process of constitution making in south sudan uh, finally as we go to conclude the program since uh, we've already uh, understood the whole thing that uh, was going on about the the workshop um the the provisions in the agreement that have not been implemented so far to prepare the people of south sudan to that permanent constitution making process uh, when we talk about uh, reviewing of uh, the Political Parties Act uh, and um, this uh, as an activist, because you're also an activist, uh, from the perspective of uh, 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 the civil society, uh, do, how do you see that? Uh, don't you feel that, don't you feel concerned that the those provisions that have not been implemented, including reconstituting the transitional National Legislative Assembly uh, um, would affect the, the, the power and constitution making process and should be should be should should be actually addressed. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's a critical question, Roger. And not only just as an activist, but also as a member of the National Constitution Amendment Committee, you realize that we have we started doing work 
right when the transitional, when the agreement was signed. And the agreement required us to incorporate the provisions of the RCs into the constitution through an amendment bill in 21 days. And we did that as National Constitution Amendment Committee. And we have actually, and we also mandated to review a number of and several pieces of legislation to guide the implementation of the transitional period and then after transitional period. And that includes the five security laws. That is the SPLA Act, National Security Act, Police Service Act, Prison Service Act, and the Fire Brigade Bill, because South Sudan did not have a Fire Brigade Act. So it's actually a bill that we worked on. And then we have also looked at the Political Parties Act. And then because of the kind of reform that is expected during the transitional period, and you realize that chapter four is looking, at, looking mainly at economic reforms in the country, we have also looked at some of the accountability acts such as Public Finance Management Act and the Audit Chamber Act. We are almost finalizing the Audit Chamber Act. And now we're looking at Petroleum Management Act. However, the challenge is these laws have stayed at the level of Ministry of Justice. We have handed the security laws to Ministry of Justice, but it has not been taken to Parliament. It has not been tabled. Again, the laws that we are now looking at require the reconstituted parliament to look at it. Parliament has not been reconstituted. And that is a big problem. That is actually an obstacle to the reform that we expect to see in the country. And Roger, you're right to raise it. Not reconstituting parliament is actually another way of the parties letting down the people of South Sudan. And it is a big problem. And again, with the constitution making process, if you look at chapter six still, Chapter six requires, chapter six, article 6.12 requires, requires the, is it 1.12? No, it's, yes, article 6.12 requires that they, there should be, in, the, in, in drafting the permanent constitution, lessons be drawn from South Sudan common law, constitutional history, and experience of this agreement. So what, what is happening with the agreement may not necessarily inform that process. And without using that, then we realize that we are missing in the implementation of the agreement. Again, the, the agreement requires that parliament enacts a legislation to govern the process of constitution making. If parliament has not been reconstituted, then it's going to be difficult for us to officially kickstart the process of constitution making in South Sudan. And I think that is problematic because then we will be running in a vacuum and we will not have realized the reform and transformation agenda that the agreement presents to the people of South Sudan. In conclusion, uh, what would be your message to the parties to the revitalized agreement? Uh, and uh, the government, which uh, uh, is headed by President Kerr, which is also uh, known in the peace, peace, peace agreement as uh, the incumbent. Uh, so so uh, since uh, the, the implementation of the agreement, you find the parties always uh, trading accusations. This one is the obstacle, the other one is this and all this. Uh, what would be your message to the parties and also those who are key in uh, in uh, the parties that are key in uh, in getting things done. My message, message. I would I would rather I would want to structure my message this way to the people of South Sudan is that the agreement is a public document. It's important for us to read the agreement and understand the agreement so that we can demand for accountability according to provisions of the agreement. And to the political parties and those who are slowing down the process because there's national constitution amendment committee we have only received the list from former detainees to those other parties that have not submitted their list i want to tell them that the people of south sudan are watching 
and them slowing the process of implementation of the agreement is actually slowing progress of our country and we will hold them accountable and they will they will not history will not forget them for having done that the best they should do is to allow the processes to happen and reconstitute parliament so that we move on in putting south sudan on the right track for reform and transformation on the right track for development Remember, so that we move on in putting south sudan on the right track for reform and transformation on the right track for development okay um so you mean only fd so far submitted the list for uh the members that are supposed to be appointed to the reconstituted transitional national legislative assembly yes and the other parties you are calling upon them to submit their list as a yes member of the ncic the national constitution amendment committee yes well uh but some people would say uh as the ncic is calling upon uh, those parties to 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 submit their list and uh of course maybe the peace monitoring body as a whole is calling for 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 that to happen uh things like even appointment of uh, the okay, I think he had I'm, say, I'm saying while uh, mm. the reconstitution of uh, the Transitional Legis National Legislative Assembly, uh, starting with mm. submission of names by the parties, uh, is something that uh, mm. the, the National Constitution Amendment Committee, which you are a member of, and uh, also maybe because also maybe together with the, the, the monitoring body, RGMEC, uh, calling mm. upon those parties to, to fulfill that. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the, there are certain things that have not happened, uh, including the formation of uh, the state governments. Uh, 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 governments at the lower levels have not been fully constituted, have not been constituted actually, and then there is, issue also, there is an issue also of one state. So, um, don't you think they would see that you are rushing while other uh, parts of the agreement uh, have not been implemented? The, the fact that the agreement is being implemented, I want to say selectively, is a problem. And the selective implementation of this agreement is counterproductive to our country. I was particular about the question of raise, submitting lists of the members to be, to the, the list of the members to be nominated as MPs for the reconstitution of parliament, because that is directly under our responsibility as the National Constitution Amendment Committee, as it's provided for in Article 1.1814 of the agreement. However, you write the fact that the subnational government has not been established, it is a problem. Appointing governors alone without the other structures of governance at state level is, is, is not much in itself. And I can't say that that is the implementation of the agreement. So I would still appeal to the parties for full formation. And I'm one person who has, this is now my personal view, Roger. Personally, I believe that what we have right now is a partially formed revitalize transitional government of national unity. If these political leaders want us to refer to them as the revitalized transitional government of national unity, let them establish the subnational level of governance so that we, the people, can accept that, yes, now we are past the formation of government and we are moving into implementation of the agreement. Well, um... Thank you very much. With that, we have come to the end uh, of the program, the weekly review, uh, making sense of relevant topics and news. Uh, our guest was uh, Lona Merikaje, uh, lead facilitator, uh, the workshop uh, on permanent constitution making process uh, that is still ongoing. And um, thank you, Lona. Thank you for having me.